uh, uh, and uh, words about me. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Hedy Jafari. I was working as a financial manager and budget analyst uh, for UCSD for 25 years. And in 2000, I started also doing my side job as a, a tax preparation a content outside and uh, started my business and um, enrolled agent. Uh, then I can practice before the IRS, as she mentioned. And uh, if you, uh, the difference between the normal people, I mean, not normal people, the, the people that they can do, everybody can do taxes. Uh, you can uh, get a PTIN number, preparing tax ID number from IRS, and you're allowed to do that. Uh, but uh, to practice before the IRS means uh, if you get audited and you're scared to go yourself, uh, I can be with you. You don't need to be there. I can go. Uh, you give uh, me a power of attorney and I go on behalf of you and resolve uh, to the tax court, uh, resolve the problem. Kind of attorney uh, in taxes. Uh, uh, then uh, that's the uh, specialty that I have. And right now, uh, in tw 20 years ago, I started with uh, 20 uh, um, taxes. Now I have uh, 300 plus clients and everything that I got it, everybody that I uh, came to me uh, was uh, through uh, word of mouth and not any marketing that I do. People uh, from everywhere, from UCSD, few, I can tell you about 10 clients that I have, uh, 10 professors that I have from UCSD that they are coming to me every year for their taxes. I'm honored to prepare their taxes. Uh, um, and uh, can we go to the second slide? Today is not under my control. I don't know. And I cannot see myself. I don't know if you see me uh, properly or not. But anyway, uh, is there any way that I can see myself? Susan? Yeah, we see. I know that. <laughs> Mel, make him a co-host. <clears throat> Mel. Anyway, I, I had a presentation two weeks ago and whoever participated, uh, it's not gonna be uh, that much difference between the previous one and this one. Um, uh, but uh, I will be happy to answer if you participated the other one and you are here today, I will be happy uh, to answer any question that you have uh, as much as I can. And if I don't know the answer, uh, definitely uh, I will research and I will be happy to email you the answer of your question. Hey, yeah. we, can, yes. we can see the slide now that says new items introduced in 2021. Correct, I see that one uh, too. But uh, on the right side, I, I was wondering if I can see myself as a co-host, as uh, Susan mentioned. Uh, but if, I, if it's difficult, that's fine. So, um, uh, but a uh, new item uh, in 20, you know that when the tax was changed in 2018, uh, there were, since then, that was the huge tax uh, uh, changes uh, and laws. And I, if you were in my meeting, uh, pers uh, in person meeting, in 2019, uh, that was or 2020, I think it was 2020. Uh, anyway, because 2019 I retired. 2020 in person, so I just presented all the new items and changes. Uh, since then, there is not that much changes except that some increasing standard deduction that I'm going to tell you. One question was about the standard deduction. Uh, what is the new standard deduction? Uh, so, uh, and I'm going to talk about that. Uh, 
so uh, today it's going to be, uh, I'm going to talk about standard deductions, uh, how much uh, they are uh, for 2021, uh, that you are going to use it recovery rebate that we, if you remember, we had additional, the third one, uh, when Biden took the office last year, uh, people that they were eligible, they got it uh, 1400 per person uh, in, I think it was around March last year. And uh, the beauty of that was uh, whoever was eligible, uh, it was for everybody. If you had kids at home uh, under 17, uh, that uh, child was eligible also for 14 because for the first two one, not the second one, but the first one uh, was 500 for each kid. But uh, the second 600 for everyone and the third one was 14 for everyone. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a little touch a, a little about unemployment and also uh, rental income and losses uh, and 1031 exchange for investment property. And I'm not gonna talk about living abroad and taxes because that was the previous one. Someone was interested. I had, uh, that's not a discussion today, but if you have a question, uh, definitely I will answer it by that. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, 2020 uh, standard deduction for single uh, was 12,400. Now is 12,550, increase $150. You know that cost of living uh, and uh, adjustment. Um, but uh, we are all see that unfortunately that's, uh, that's not enough because with the inflation that we have right now uh, is huge and uh, really difficult for many families. Uh, if you're married, it's going to be twice for uh, increase from 24800 to $25,100. 25, if you're head of household, uh, it has been increased uh, also that $150 increase overall uh, for all of those different filing situations. Uh, 18650 to 18800 And if you are uh 65 years and older like me uh you know that uh, we get uh 1350 uh, additional uh, it means that if you're married uh, both over 65 uh, uh, you are going to get 12550 plus 2700 additional that's going to bring it to uh 27 28000 almost 28000 but if you are uh, head of household or single, you get 1700 increase. Uh, this is, uh, I hope that I answer your question. One of the, uh, uh, one of the guests uh, has uh, uh, this question that how much is the standard deduction? So uh, whatever we had it last year, $150 extra, uh, we get it this year. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the things has been changed, uh, and uh, I think it is from 2018. Uh, you know, one of the, uh, if you are not qualified for itemized deduction, uh, when, um, uh, that it means that you have already paid your mortgage, uh, your payments of property tax and um, donation, if, uh, if your house is paid off <clears throat> and then definitely you are in a, uh, better off with the standard deduction and not itemized deduction because the main schedule a itemized deduction uh, the main cost is mortgage interest uh, uh, because the property tax and the payroll tax uh, has been capped to ten thousand. if it was before maybe your property tax is 11 12 and you pay payroll tax 15 uh, uh, 10,000, so it brings you over the standard deduction, but after 2018, they cap property tax and payroll tax to 10,000. So without having mortgage interest, uh, definitely 99% uh, people are better off with the standard deduction. And with the standard deduction, uh, without having a standard deduction, normally before 2018, you couldn't deduct any donation, but they changed the law, even if you are uh, if you are do, uh, using a standard deduction, if you are single, still you can deduct up to 300 donation uh, cash or material donation from your uh, taxable income. 
And if you're married, you can deduct 600 <clears throat> from your taxable income. If you are in that uh, position, if you are doing ta your taxes yourself, so prepare uh, a Schedule A, uh, although that you don't need that one, but you need to put a donation description on Schedule A uh, line, uh, there is the box of the donation, uh, cash or material. Put that number over there and on the first page of 1040, there is a box that you need to put 300 or 600, or if you donated less, 200, you put 200. Uh, so, but uh, you have to take the action. Uh, it doesn't mean that, uh, and the place to put that 300 uh, the donation a month is still Schedule A, that uh, you go there, you put it, and you put also two places that you need to put it uh, on the front page. This is about donation. The beauty that, uh, and many of us, we donate without any expectation to have a, uh, a tax break, uh, because you know that uh, our bracket maybe uh, is varies between 22% to 28%, 22% of 360, 70. I'm not doing donation just to get the $60 back. So that's uh, not may maybe, but if you do, uh, you can uh, take the uh, uh, deduction for that. Next, please. Okay, uh, this is, <clears throat> I touched this one a little bit. Uh, uh, first one was in 2020, uh, 1200. The second stimulus money was uh, December, uh, I should say December, January 2021, uh, but uh, uh, it was applied to 2020 taxes. And <clears throat> the third one was in March uh, 2020, February, March 1400. But there, uh, there was a. If you haven't received that uh, because of your adjusted gross income was over seventy five at that year, uh, at that time, I mean, uh, I would say that time. Um, and now that you are filing your taxes, and it's going to be you are going to be qualified. Always remember this one. Maybe this is the last time because <clears throat> I hope that. We never ever need uh, this money uh, again. But <clears throat> if um, if you in when they were paying this one and they look at your 2020 income, adjusted gross income, and your AGI was for single 75,000 and for married 150,000 and head of household 112,500, uh, uh, and you didn't get it, but there is a question on your taxes this year for 2021 uh, and if you're again if you're doing yourself or if um, when I'm doing taxes here uh, I'm not asking that question on my program uh, that's recovery uh, rebate there is a form uh, but when I put the information about the if my clients have W2, 1099, whatever income that they have. When I put it, if it goes over 75 and 150 and 112, automatically that form uh, will be dropped. I don't need to answer that form. But uh, software is going to take it. But if you are doing it still, maybe you are one of those the expert that you are still doing pen and paper, be careful about that. Uh, because on software, uh, the question comes up, uh, question comes up itself, uh, but not uh, on pen, pen and paper prepared. Um, believe it or not, um, I know some people that they are still doing, uh, my relative that they call, and then they start calling me close to every 15 that, oh, I, this, I have a question. And then I, uh, uh, two years ago, I realized that they are still using pen and paper. <clears throat> anyway. But <clears throat> if based on your 2021 income, you are eligible for uh, uh, this rebate, then you are going to get it. If you didn't get it, then depends on how much is your uh, eligibility. And uh, answering that question uh, is going to be credit uh, on your uh, taxes uh, on when you do taxes. And as I mentioned, uh, it was 1400 for everybody in a household 
uh, kids uh, under uh, 17 and younger, 17 years old and younger, and all of the um, adult people. Next slide, please. Um, you know, unemployment was unusual. Uh, and, and now I see uh, many people, uh, some of my clients, that uh, uh, EDD uh, started uh, auditing people. Uh, it was a crisis uh, in 2020, March 2020. And without checking any eligibility, uh, uh, they were issuing unemployment. Uh, I think 100% of us uh, who were working for UCSD and retired, we never applied for unemployment uh, because we work and uh, we didn't use anything, but we were eligible, but we didn't use it until, re until we retired. But uh, based on uh, during the pandemic, they didn't uh, do that much. Uh, I have seen people uh, before pandemic when they were applying for unemployment, it was too much paperwork and uh, checking and everything. But pandemic, uh, people were not working uh, and uh, everybody got it, even people that they were uh, not eligible before, self-employed people, they were not eligible before to get unemployment. Uh, they, the government said, no, just give it to, me, uh, to them. Uh, people are in a difficult situation. They got it. And it continued through September last year. <clears throat> Uh, if you are one of those that after retirement is still working and you got laid off uh, and you receive unemployment, uh, you have already received a 1099G, it's online or you got a paper and uh, that, that money that you receive as an unemployment is a taxable money to the federal, is not taxable to the state because we contributed ourselves. So the state is exempt, but federal is taxable money you need to report on your taxes. Last year, uh, in 2020, when Biden came to the office and uh, the package, uh, I think it was uh, 1.9 trillion, whatever it was, uh, included that 10,200 of uh, unemployment was exempt from taxes on the federal and the rest was taxable. Uh, I haven't heard anything for this year, maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, the second package that uh, they are still uh, debating, fighting, Biden is still fighting to approve that. Uh, maybe there is some uh, release for unemployment, but uh, as much as I know, uh, the only thing that is related to taxes is child tax credit that they are fighting over that. Uh, even uh, Democrats are fighting over that. Some one or two Democrats are not happy to extend uh, uh, child tax credit uh, additional child tax to 2022. Anyway, so, but uh, remember, if you are one of those that uh, you received an uh, unemployment, uh, remember to add to your taxes uh, on uh, 2021 taxes. Uh, again, uh, uh, if you are using software or a content, um, anyways, software, uh, then it means that software is going to exclude that one from your California tax. It's just taxable to the federal. Next slide, please. Uh, I think that uh, if I can see people that they have a rental uh, investment, uh, I'm hoping that uh, you also are one of those people that you wanted to do during working your time, you were uh, able to upgrade your house and, and residence and kept the previous one. If you're one of those, so in, in whatever you received, uh, uh, rents that you got it, as a landlord is going to be taxable uh, and so and if you had if you have tenant and had tenant during the pandemic and those people uh, it was in a, uh, they were in a difficult situation and they applied for the grant from California I saw people that they applied and they uh, if they were approved 
due to the pandemic uh, to for the rental assistance that rental has or uh, has been paid directly to the landlord they uh, didn't pay to the tenant to pay the landlord so landlord uh, fill out the form i did this for a few of my clients uh, they came here they didn't know how to uh, use the uh, uh, form on California side, I helped them. Uh, so, and the, uh, they checked that one, they checked the tenant, they checked the landlord, and they sent check directly uh, for the tenant's uh, rent to the landlord. You would receive a form 1099 miscellaneous, and it shows uh, on the box rent, it shows the, uh, that, uh, how much you receive from the state. Payer is going to be the state of California, recipient is going to be you, and you need to include that one on your taxes. If your tenant received, uh, for example, six months um, assistant and she pays six months, you, uh, you include both of them on your taxes. I just wanted to let you know that uh, it's, it was not, uh, it was a free money for the tenant, but it's not, uh, it is a taxable money for the landlord. Uh, and uh, I received uh, last year, it was more last year and this year I got uh, this question uh, that um, the tenant uh, didn't uh, pay rent for three months. Can I deduct that one uh, from my income? Uh, I said, of course, you are not gonna, you are not gonna deduct anything on your taxes. Uh, if your tenant was paying you 2000 a month uh, for a year 24000 and she couldn't pay you for three months and you receive only for two months, she didn't pay you, he or she didn't pay you for two months and you receive only 10 months, 20000 so you report 20000 It doesn't mean that you deduct another 4000 from 20. No, whatever you collected, you report it. And then if that, if those two months, 4,000, is going to be paid the year after, you're going to include additional 4,000 on the year that you receive it. We are cash-based uh, taxpayer. Um, whatever we receive it, whatever we pay it, the year, uh, the period is going to be reported. And so we are not accrual people, so we are cash-based people. So, uh, watch uh, an email if you are one of those that you receive. There should be a report of 1099 miscellaneous uh, on box rent. There's different boxes. Rent is going to be reported on that. Next slide, please. Uh, this is kind of uh, also uh, interesting uh, category uh, for people uh, that. Um, have investment property. Um, when you have a condo, house, uh, apartment that you are renting, and that property is investment property. If you sell that property, if you decide that, okay, uh, I wanted to sell it, enjoy the money, um, you report on your taxes. <clears throat> And if you bought it for 100,000, and uh, I wish that you did, and now you're selling for half a million dollars, um, you made 400,000 gain, and you need to pay capital gain tax on that. Um, of course, uh, you bought it for 100,000 over 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, and you spend a lot of money to upgrade that one, you are gonna to add all of those to that uh, purchasing price, uh, major uh, modeling and expenses that you didn't claim on your taxes every year. So you add that one, then you have uh, uh, selling expenses, agent, escrow, all of those. You add all of this, and the difference between the selling price and all these expenses is going to be your gain. So <clears throat> How, how much is the capital gain tax? Depends on how much gain you have and how much other income you have. Uh, if you're single, uh, under $75,000 gain and total income AGI, 
is going to be 0% capital gain tax. If it's up to 400,000 income that year, you're going to pay 15% over 400 for married and jointly, and it's going to be 20%. So uh, uh, bottom line, the maximum capital gain tax is going to be 20, 000, 20%. It means that if, you're, if you made 100,000 gain, you're going to pay 20,000 uh, to the California, to this, to the federal, and there is some cap, uh, capital gain for California. But some people they have investment property and they don't want to sell it. They wanted to the property that they have, the apartment or um, the condo, whatever it is. Uh, it's old and they don't want to uh, uh, spend more money uh, to remodel that, to upgrade that. They wanted to, or or sometimes uh, you wanted to uh, do it and go to another city. Uh, sometimes <clears throat> you, you were here in San Diego for your life and now you decided to go to another state or to another city and you don't like to manage that when you were managing yourself and you don't want to hire any manager to, uh, to, to do it from the distance to take care of that. In that situation, <clears throat> is, uh, and you uh, you don't need the money. Yeah, you like uh, to have uh, investment property. In that situation, there is a paragraph about 1031 exchange. I'm sure that many people heard about that. 1031 exchange means that you can sell an investment property and uh, use, uh, using the money, the same money, you're selling, uh, let me just give you an example. You bought the property 100,000, you're selling for 500,000, uh, but you decide to buy another investment property uh, with the same money. The new uh, property cannot be under 500,000. It should be minimum, the new one that you're buying should be minimum of uh, 500,000 uh, or plus. Uh, how it works, uh, it can be, uh, you can, you have, when you sell it, you have six months uh, to buy a new one uh, and pay a minimum of 500. And there is a paperwork, uh, your accountant cannot do that. I'm just telling you that it's, uh, there are some people that they are licensed because someone asked me to do it a few years ago for uh, that person. And when I did the research, I said that, no, it's not that uh, accountant can do it. And of course we can do it if you have the permission and license uh, from the IRS. There, is this, uh, there are people that they are licensed. Uh, you get uh, in touch with them and they, you fill out the paperwork and everything, how much you bought it uh, and how much you're selling and how much you are buying the new one. All of this is gonna be recorded. What is the benefit of this one for you? Okay. Uh, you bought it 100,000, you're selling 500, and you're buying another one, say 500. In another state, which is cheaper, you buy a better property with the 500. At that time, you are not gonna pay any capital gain tax for 400,000. So you are gonna postpone the payment of property tax. Then you just continue if, if one day you decide to sell the second one that you bought it for 500,000, at that time, imagine that, I guess that uh, example that you bought it for, uh, you sold the first one 100,000 for 500. You bought it the 500 and then a few years later I said, I'm done, I'm tired of doing this, I'm gonna sell it. You sell it for 700,000, there you're capital gain is gonna calculate based on the first one, 100, 700. Because you had 400 first, you didn't pay taxes and you have 200 now, it's adding to 400 is 600,000. So you are gonna have a capital gain 600 and that year you need to pay if you are not gonna continue uh, having investment property, you are gonna pay taxes on 600,000. So you skip capital gain if you do 1031 exchange for investment property.
its investment property. Because I got questions that, oh, I have a, I'm living in a house, I'm selling a single or married, doesn't matter. You know that if you live in a, a property more than two years, uh, if you're single and selling that one, if you're single, $250,000 capital gain is exempt. If you're married, half a million dollars is exempt. But in this market, I got the question recently, in this market, if you're single and uh, selling more than, uh, more than, and gain more than 250, you need to pay capital gain taxes on the additional. But they were asking me that, can I do 1031 exchange for, for the property that I'm living in? said, 1031 exchange is for investment property. No, you cannot say that I'm gonna sell this one. I have half a million for single person, half a million dollars gain, and I uh, skip half a million and buy another one. No. 1031 is exchange is for investment property. But remember, one thing that you need to remember is important uh, 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 additional information. Uh, if I have a rental property and I do a 1031 exchange, I skip taxes, and end of that uh, from having buying a 100,000 uh, house, I have $1 million uh, uh, investment property that I have ever I never paid taxes on capital gain on these exchanges. And then I pass that one to my kids. I, um, we die uh, and that's going to be inheritance property. Then they are not going to pay taxes at all. Uh, it's an inter uh, interesting subject that uh, when they receive this property, uh, uh, when we die and they get this property, if it's, and they sell it at the death, uh, at time of death, um, and fair market value, that time is $1 million and they sell it 1 million, is gonna be exclude tax uh, exclusion uh, because inheritance up to 11 million, uh, 800,000 is tax-free, uh, 11, eight, yeah, 11, eight right now. Uh, inheritance, uh, we, they don't pay tax on that. No, but if they keep that property, uh, Remember, uh, if my if our son get the property, uh, fair market value, for example, half a million, uh, if he said, no, I'm, I don't need the money, I'm going to keep this one, then he sells later in three years, and that 500 is going to be 700, then he needs to pay taxes, capital gains at 200, the difference of fair market value, the day that they inherited, and the day that they are selling. So capital gain that they, uh, they add capital gain after uh, our debt is gonna be taxable. But if they sell it immediately, fair market value, the same as the you know, value uh, inheritance, there's gonna be, there, there's no taxes, although that we didn't pay taxes on changing 1031 exchange a few times. So just wanted to mention that uh, I got this uh, question many times <clears throat> that, um, okay, if you continue that one, then our kids are going to pay taxes. It doesn't matter. No, your ki our kids are not going to pay taxes on their exchange if they sell it upon our debt. They're not going to pay taxes. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, uh, Proposition 19, I think it was 2020. Uh, election 2020, that it was passed. Uh, before that, what is proposition? Before that, when you were selling your property residence here and you were over 55 years, a considered senior, uh, if we had a property that we bought it for 100,000 again and living in that property, we decided to sell it and buy another one, uh, the new one uh, had uh, uh, we bought it for 500,000. The property tax, we could transfer property tax from the previous one. So I'm sure that you know about that. Uh, if, he, uh, uh, if you were a uh, senior or disabled person, disabled or senior, you could transfer the same property. Uh, for example, 100,000 property has about 1,200 a year taxes. Uh, 500 uh, property has 6,000 a year <clears throat> uh, taxes. 
but as a senior or disabled person, we could transfer the same property tax to the new uh, uh, residents. Uh, but the pro what, uh, th that was not new, that was from before. <clears throat> but what Proposition 19 did, question was, cons consideration was, <clears throat> excuse me, is that before it was only uh, it applied, applied to the property in the same county. If you were in San Diego County and selling and getting another one in San Diego County, you could use that uh, provision to transfer the previous uh, property tax to the new one. Proposition 19 changed that one to the whole California. So uh, that's why, if you remember, since 2020, uh, uh, always, okay, I, I don't ask my clients, I just put the answer, but if you are doing yourself, uh, you remember that there, there was, a, when you open a California tax to do that, is question is, where it, what is your county? We didn't have this question before uh, 2020. After 2020, that the Proposition 19 passed, uh, there's a question uh, regarding that one. Uh, and uh, so it means that if you are here and, and you decide to go to LA County and move, move to LA County, then still before you couldn't transfer the property tax, uh, uh, senior property tax, previous one to the new one now because it was uh, they were uh, they were two different county because the you you know that the property tax is not something that goes to the IRS it goes to the county each county collect the uh, property tax for themselves and spend it on the, that county now uh, you can go to LA county uh, San Francisco wherever and take the advantage of the old resident sales of the old resident or base of the old resident for paying property tax. This is the uh, Proposition 19. Remember, if you are going to move, uh, uh, you are eligible to transfer uh, the previous one, uh, previous property uh, tax to the new one. Doesn't matter how much more the value of the property is. Let's see if the next slide, if there is any more slide, I think that was the last one. Yeah. That was the last one. Again, I'm Hedi Jafari. My uh, presentation is not, uh, um, it's a due, uh, 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 due that I have to <laughs> use as the colleagues uh, that I do every year and not for having more uh, clients. If you have questions uh, all the time, uh, that I get some question from you guys, I will be happy to answer the question. But of course, if you uh, wanted to come over here and uh, uh, I need to do something extra or consulting, I had some uh, people that they came to me and they had uh, 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 consulting, they would need my, con uh, my service as a consultant. Of course, they paid me. Uh, but if you have just question, um, you're confused, you're doing something, your uh, content said something that you're not agree with that, I will be happy over the phone to answer without asking for any compensation. Uh, this is my moral due to my colleague that I was working for 25 years. And you have my phone number, uh, you have my email address. Of course, my UCSD email was hjafari at ucsd.edu. That since I'm the member of retirement, it's going to be forwarded. But my direct email is hedijafari at gmail.com. And I, I will be happy if you have any question right now. So Thank you, Hedy. What a fabulous presentation.